Reports have been released talking about the Chicago Bulls finally going into a rebuild mode, or at the very least, a serious retool of this team. Is this the team that we want for the future? Probably not. So this might be the best decision for the Chicago Bulls to do moving forward. I'm your host, Joey Mercer. This is another episode of Bulls Digest. And before we get into it there today, I just want to say that about 88% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. So make sure, if you aren't already subbed to the channel, to go down below, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and you will be updated every single time that we upload via notifications on whatever device you watch this on. So without further ado, let's get into the topic at hand of today, because it's a really big one, and that is, crazy plan just might work. So yeah, I mean, we've discussed a few different scenarios as the trade deadline is just around the corner on February 8th, and we've talked about individual trades, but we haven't necessarily talked about a step-by-step -step plan. We've talked about multiple trades that could happen, but we haven't talked about trades that should happen in a step-by-step -step situation. These have all just been hypotheticals brought up by the media or rumors within different franchises, but this one right here was by a writer that really caught my attention. The title of the article was Chicago Bulls Three-Step Pipe Dream Plan to Retooling Flawed Roster into Contending One. There are potential moves the Chicago Bulls can make to retool roster into a contender one. And that article is by Matt Sidney, and a uh, really, really interesting read here because, like I said, we just haven't seen this type of article come out about the Bulls so far this year. This one started out by saying the Bulls have been wanting to compete for years, cutting corners in player development and trading their young assets for veteran players. The out-of-nowhere Lonzo Ball injury surely has dampened several of the expectations over the past two years. Regardless, the Bulls need to help if they want to continue to try to complete. They need to have the pieces to legitimately contend. And that is very accurate. I mean, this team has just been very stubborn in the fact that they don't want to take the time, it seems like, until more recently, of course, and really put the time in with these younger guys, give them the proper player development they need. And said they're like, yeah, we got these young guys too. Hopefully they can produce right now because we're going to go out and get whatever t talent we can get to try to make a playoff push. That's not always the greatest decision, and it hasn't really worked out in the Bulls' favor because they haven't had any playoff success. They've only made the playoffs once over the past several years. It's been a while. And outside of that, I mean, they lost in five games to the Bucks. I mean, it's not much to look at there. And when you look at how the team is performing so far this season, it's once again a team that hovers just below 500 and is around a play-in spot. It's not exactly what we're looking to do. And you need to make a drastic change. You either give us in that push over the edge that we can perform well in a playoff or just completely rebuild and tank this thing because it just isn't working. The next thing we saw in it was a potential trade which would send Chicago Bulls uh, point guard Lonzo Ball to the Portland Trailblazers. We would also send back Patrick Williams and 2020 six first round pick for Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant has obviously been a great player so far this year. Uh, really, really bad rebounder. I'm going to come out and say that right away. He averages like four rebounds a game at a power forward position. One of the worst rebounders in the league at that position. Although he has shot the ball really well at about 40-41% from the three-point land and is a solid score for the Trailblazers, but he's still on the Trailblazers. Uh, he has put up numbers on teams that have been solid in the past, like the Thunder as well as the Nuggets, but not exactly quite the guy that we're looking for. This said that the Chicago Bulls could look to offload Lonzo Ball's contract, seeing as though we will never really know when he will ever take the court again. The Bulls include young 22-year-old Patrick Williams and a first-round pick in the trade to bring some sizzle to the trade for the Portland Trailblazers. So... Yeah, I mean, Portland probably doesn't want to move Jeremy Grant, but do we want to take on all that money? How does this work, cap-wise? It simply really doesn't. I mean, we would be taking on a lot of money. Jeremy Grant just signed that really big deal with the Trailblazers to say that he's staying in the offseason. Although he's a very good tool on a team, his rebounding numbers are just so, so poor. I would worry about where to play him at the 3 or the 4, where he seems to be more of a tweener right now. Although he is a very good shooter, I would not give up more uh, than just Lonzo Ball and maybe a first 
even though Lonzo might not come back. I mean, giving up on Patrick Williams for that, I'm not sure if it's the best situation, because at the end of the day, you're putting a lot of money for a guy like that, and I think that's definitely an overpayment right now. The next thing that we saw was the Blazers aren't competitive this season, and I'm convinced Grant could have had an exceptionally reasonable price. The Blazers don't have much use for a soon-to-be 30-year-old forward who's posting a 26 usage percentage. This team should be focusing on getting the most out of its young players, especially Shaden Sharp and Scoot Henderson. These two are the future and the now. Grant's play doesn't help them either since he's not much of a playmaker. The Blazers acquire Jeremy Grant Light and Patrick Williams. They get a similar-sized defensive-minded forward who connects on over 40% from three. The difference is Williams is a bit under eight years younger than Grant. The first-round pick in 2026 helps the Blazers for flexibility while stockpiling draft assets for the future. This trade helps the Blazers, but it really helps the Bulls. Jeremy Grant is essentially what Patrick Williams could become if he fully develops over the next couple of seasons. The Bulls don't have multiple seasons to wait. They need to strike now. Grant is the perfect switchy three-point shooting defensive forward that makes this team a little more of a legitimate contender. And that's one thing I want to talk about is people really overrate Jeremy Grant's defense. It's not that great. It's not where people put it as is him being a defensive-minded player. It's about average, sometimes a little bit worse. He's more of an offensive-minded player now. The defense is really gone. He hasn't done that in five or six years now. Uh, when it comes to them talking about it helping the Bulls more than the Trailblazers, I don't really know about that, because where is this Bulls team going? This is the first move, and we're already off to a little bit of a bumpy start, but let's see what they have to say next. Next thing was... The Brooklyn Nets getting DeMar DeRozan, Dale and Terry, a 2028 first, a 2030 first, and we received Mikhail Bridges, Dorian Finney-Smith, and Dennis Smith Jr. So first off, I really don't think that the Brooklyn Nets would do this trade. However, if Bridges becomes disgruntled with his situation in Brooklyn, because they really haven't been performing very well, I could see him being moved to another team. The head office has come out from Brooklyn Nets saying that they don't want to move on from Bridges and want to build around him. But if the player just simply isn't happy where he's to, the front office might have their hand moved and they might have to pull the trigger and trade Bridges to another team. Would DeRozan and Dale and Terry and two first be the right value? I'm not sure. The Nets aren't a contender and they certainly aren't anywhere near that with Mikel Bridges gone, but this could turn into a three-team trade or another move for the Nets just trying to get value in return with a young guy in Terry and two firsts if they go towards a rebuild while we still get talent back in Mikel Bridges. I love the fit of Mikel Bridges, obviously a young guy. His defense has really dropped off this season, but is still a great shot creator, lots of length there, and I think he's still young enough that we could still do a little something with him. He's still got a couple of years left until he really hits that too old to really start building around him stage and uh yeah i think that is a solid trade if the bulls can pull that off for sure i'm sure what the nets would think of it though the next thing that i had to say on that was in the first move the bulls got a switchy long three and d forward and jeremy grant their next trade should be focused on bringing in additional versatile consistent players to help this team win they achieved this with great success with the acquisition of Mikel Bridges and Dorian Finney-Smith. Dennis Smith Jr. is a nice complimentary defensive point guard, and the Bulls become incredibly switchable once this trade goes through. Their defense seems complete, but it's their offense that would really open up. Bridges would be an elite second option for this team, backing up Levine. At first, you might not think that Brooklyn Nets would be interested in this trade. Look a little bit further, and it makes quite a bit of sense. The Nets aren't as competitive this season as they would have hoped. This trade gets them a young 21-year-old forward in Dale and Terry, along with an expiring $28.6 million contract in DeRozan. This sets the Nets up nicely for the offseason. They could look to make a nice free agent acquisition or continue acquiring young assets to build for the future. Either way, the Nets might not fight this trade as much as people think they would. <clears throat> I don't think it's the net situation here. Bridges is not coming off the bench for Zach Levine. That just simply isn't happening. If this were to happen, Bridges would just start at the three and you'd have Jeremy Grant at the four. It doesn't make any sense for them to have Bridges come off the bench for Zach Levine. This plan so far is absolutely crazy, but if it were to go down, it would definitely have to be Levine at the two, and then you'd have Bridges at the three, starting Kobe White at the one, Jeremy Grant at the 4, and Booch at the 5. 
or would it be Vooch at the five, which leads us to the next thing. That is the Bulls trading <clears throat> Nikola Vucevic and Ayo Desumu for Daniel Gafford, DeLon Wright, and two second round picks. So <clears throat> this, so to speak, mock step-by-step -step system this guy has put in really has the Bulls in a contending position. I think the Bulls would be obviously an amazing team. If you got Daniel Gafford, I'm not really sure about the center rotation. With him and Drummond, I don't really like that as much as Vooch being there. But DeLon Wright is a really solid role player and piece off the bench for sure. Do I think that the Bulls should go ahead and do that trade? Probably not. I don't think you're getting anything more out of Daniel Gafford that you're not getting out of Drummond off the bench. I mean, I don't really see that. Gafford's one of the worst starting centers in the league right now because he's on the Wizards. He'd be a backup on any almost any other team, and that's just 100% accurate. He's a guy that really hovers around the rim, can't really shoot or create anything, and he is solid at blocking shots, but his overall defense is a little bit lackluster. Even if he is having a good night defensively he's still only scoring just around the rim Vooch is able to stretch the floor hit some people on cuts and it's just an overall better offensive player although Gafford might pick up some things that Vooch lacks on defense you're not really gaining a whole lot defensively to make up for the laps and the offensive talent there so that's probably the trade that I like the least then it goes in saying that the final move for the Chicago Bulls to turn this team into a true contender is to get a more defensive minded center in this trade, they bring in big man Daniel Gafford. Gafford is in the middle of a career year for him. His numbers might be modest, but he's posting career highs in points per game at 11 and rebounds per game at about 8 and blocks per game at 2. DeLon Wright joins in on the trade mostly for salary matching purposes. In theory, he does offer good size for a point of attack defender. His offense won't wow you, but his defense and size will be great for specific matchups. The Wizards might as well trade everyone who has value who won't be on this team long term. Gafford and Wright could easily be had for the right price. It might seem a bit contradicting, but the Wizards do give up two second round picks in the trade. They do this because they are getting the best player in this trade in Vucevic and a young promising guard in Desumu. Feel free to haggle on what the exact return should be for Desumu and Vooch, but the final move to make the Bulls true contenders is complete. The Bulls can now focus on gelling and getting comfortable with one another on the court before a hopeful long playoff run. So obviously this whole thing that we just talked about is them contending. I mean, this, this is just going for them not blowing things up, but it essentially could. And that's why I mentioned that at the top. Making these trades is really hoping all these players stay healthy and they really all fit together. This is like one of the most win-now step-by-step moves I've ever seen in my life. And it, it really is crazy that I came across this and I had to bring it to you guys. This could lead us into a very long rebuild if things weren't working or it could make us an instant contender right away. We're giving away a lot of pieces and the only one we're keeping are the one player that the Bulls said they wanted to trade and see what the team looked like in Zach Levine. Is that what we're going to be doing to contend with Kobe White, Zach Levine, Bridges, Jeremy Grant, and Gafford? I don't think we're winning a championship with that. I don't think that team's any better than the one that we have right now. And if it is, it's very marginal. I mean, the moves for the bench players are solid, but I feel like we're giving up way too much in return for this. And that isn't exactly what we're looking for. Now, when it comes to the full roster, they showed it at the end here and it said, final thoughts on the Bulls. The roster would be point guard Kobe White, Javon Carter, and Dennis Smith Jr., Shooting guard of Zach Levine, Caruso, DeLon Wright. They fixed it and put small forward Mikael Bridges, Torrey Craig, and jo Julian Phillips. Power forward Jeremy Grant, Dorian Finney-Smith, Terry Taylor, and Adama Sonogo, who plays center, by the way. And then centers are Daniel Gafford and Andre Drummond. At first glance, this new roster has a ton of versatility. They have multiple players who can play multiple positions. Another immediate observation is this team can now play smothering defense, and they can play it across every lineup. They don't sacrifice much offensively other than isolation scoring from DeRozan, but Bridges and Grant more than make up for that. Overall, this team screams intrigue. The top eight of this rotation becomes very scary come playoff time when benches are shortened. A newly formed big three of Levine, Bridges, and Grant is instantly better than Levine, DeRozan, and Vooch. Is it though? 
it's very marginal, like I mentioned, at best. And this seems like a 2K generated team. Are all these players going to be happy coming off the bench, getting less playing time? And do they really think if they go to Chicago in these moves that they're going to win a championship? That's what you have to realize is players have to be happy where they are to perform at their top potential. This isn't something that I think is going to happen at all. I wanted to bring it to you because there was lots of attention happening over this as it was just posted today. And I wanted to bring it to you here first on Bulls Digest to tell you that I strongly disagree with these moves happening. And this just just simply should not and could not happen. Please, please believe me here first that this is not what the Bulls should be doing. And if they do, we're going to be in a almost forever rebuild. Anyways, this has been your host, Joey Mercer. I hope you did like the video today and my take on it. I hope you go down below, hit the like button, comment on the video. I love to hear from all you guys. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're doing videos every single time we get an update here for the Chicago Bulls. And uh, yeah, hit that bell right there for notifications and i'll see y'all in the next one signing off